This viscast will look at calculating the potential from a continuous charge distribution. It's not going to solve a problem or answer a question exactly, but it will show how to set up the solution for a problem that involves electric potential from a continuous distribution of charge. The distribution we're going to be considering here will be a charged disk, a disk that has a uniform charge upon it that we could quantify by a surface charge density sigma, which would be the total charge on the disk divided by the area of the disk. And we're going to say that's uniform across that entire disk. That's a quantity that defines our disk. Our disk has a radius, capital R, as indicated here, and we're interested in what the potential, the electric potential, that will exist from this charge disk at some location on the axis of the disk, here at point P, some distance Z away from the centre of the disk. We'll begin by remembering that potential, uh, being a scalar quantity, we can think of as arising from the sum of all the small pieces of potential from any small pieces of charge that are nearby. So we could think of this disk as consisting of a whole bunch of little pieces of charge, and we could think about what does each of those pieces of charge do at point P? What potential does it produce there? You can see that we're going to have to use uh, a whole lot of little pieces of charge to make up our disk, and in fact, to get a correct answer, we really need to make these little pieces infinitely small, so they have a definite location, and then there'd be infinitely many of them. And what that really means, of course, is we're going to make our sum an integral. We're going to integrate over a lot of small contributions to the potential dV in the limit that they all become vanishingly small and there's infinitely many of them. That's what we mean by an integral. And so uh, we need to think about these, these tiny pieces contributing to the potential at point P. What do we know about the potential from a small piece of charge? We know that potential, dV in this case, will be given by the Coulomb constant K multiplied by the charge. And we'll make these small pieces of charge, if you like, dQ divided by the location of that charge, the distance that charge is away from the point we're considering. So that's what each little piece of charge would contribute. Now we can see a much simpler way of, of thinking of our little tiny pieces of charge here. Rather than just little isolated pieces, we can think about a piece of our disk that's actually this ring indicated just here. That's a quite useful way to divide up our disk because each little piece on this ring will be the same distance away from point P and each little piece on this ring will have the same charge if we make it the same size piece. So we can actually make dQ, a little element of charge on the disk, this ring itself. Our, our charge element is these little annular rings. And we'll have to add all those up going from a radius of r prime equals zero, right at the center of the disk, out to a value of r prime equals capital R. So eventually we're going to have to integrate across the radius from zero out to capital R. So how do we figure out uh, what the size of each of these little uh, dQs are for this ring? Well, dQ, which should be fairly clear here, will be our surface charge density, sigma, multiplied by whatever small piece of area we have here. So if we think about our, our ring here, remember it has radius r prime, as we've indicated, and it has a thickness here, which I won't be able to draw terribly well, as indicated on the diagram, of dr prime. That's our, that's our infinitely small ring we're considering there. If we were to kind of break that ring and un unwind it, as it were, we'd end up with a little rectangular piece of, of disk that would have, for its long edge here, the radius, sorry, the circumference of the, of the ring, which would be 2 pi r prime. And it would have, as its short edge here, a little distance dr prime. So we should be able to see from that that, in fact, our, our little element of area, dA here, will equal uh, 2 pi r prime times dr prime. So dQ here, our small element of charge, will be sigma times 2 pi r prime dr prime. So our potential, which will be the integral of dV, will now be the integral, well, dV is k dQ over r, and dq is sigma dA, and dA is 2 pi r prime dr prime. So combining all that together, we actually get this will be k times sigma 2 pi r prime dr prime over r. 
Now this small r here, the distance from each piece of the ring out to point P, that's clearly going to change as we change r prime. And if you look carefully, you can see you have a right angle triangle here with this distance r is one of the sides, our distance along the axis z is the other side, and r prime is the third side in there. So we should be able to see fairly clearly they're using Pythagoras' theorem that r here will simply be r prime squared plus z squared, the square root of that. So our calculation here, we can take some of these constants out the front now, certainly the Coulomb constant, our surface charge density sigma, um, and pi for example, don't depend upon any of these coordinates, so we can pull them out the front of the integral. Let's write this as k sigma pi, and now our integral here, and I'll actually leave the 2 there for the time being, and you'll see why in a second. 2 r prime divided by uh, the square root of r prime squared plus z squared, and that we're going to do the integral now with respect to r prime. And we might want to put some limits on our integral. It's a, it's a definite integral going from r prime equals 0 from the center of the disk out to r prime equals capital R, the radius, the full radius of the disk. So now we just need to do this integral here. And you might have a few different ways you'd like to do the integral. Basically, we've, we've set the problem up now that we should be able to solve it. The important steps were figuring out what was a reasonable element to use here for our uh, calculation of dv. And in this particular problem, the symmetry told us that a nice annular ring was a good element, and we could add up all the rings of different radii going from 0 out to the full radius of the disk. And we could determine the charge on each of those, those elements um, using our notion of a, a, an element of area and thinking about how we could understand that area and then multiplying by a surface charge density. Now, at this point, the physics is mostly done, but the mathematics is still important. How can we think about solving this integral here? Again, there's probably more than a, than a couple of ways of doing this, but one simple way might be to recognize that 2r prime at the top here is actually the derivative of r prime squared. So I could maybe make a substitution here. Let's make, say, a new symbol u equal r prime squared plus z squared. The nice thing about that is now du dr prime is 2r prime. Or if you like, du is 2r prime dr prime. And that's just the top line that we have, 2r prime dr prime, in the integral we're trying, that we're trying to do. So our potential here could be k sigma pi. Now we're going to integrate 2r prime dr prime is just going to be du, and 1 over, well that's just uh, 1 over the square root of u. So if you like, that is just u to the minus a half du. And you might want to double check we've not done anything incorrect there. I need to make sure now if I'm integrating over u, that I make sure my limits match. So when r prime equals 0, u equals z squared, and when r prime equals capital R, u will equal capital R squared plus z squared. Now hopefully that's an integral that's reasonably straightforward for you to do. The integral of u to the minus a half du. That's just a, a simple polynomial integral to do. And if you do that integral, you should end up uh, with an answer here that looks like 2 pi k sigma outside of, and it's not the most straightforward expression, but it is the square root of capital R squared plus z squared minus z. That's what the potential at point P should look like.